Okay, let's begin. We are on page uh, Zayin Amud Aleph, 7a. If you're following in the art scroll, it's on 7a3. Okay? <clears throat> right, at the, right before the wide lines. Okay? The line before the wide lines at the bottom. Rabbi Hanina Bar Idi. You find it? The line before the wide line. Rabbi Hanina Bar Idi. Everyone's got it? Yeah. Rabbi Hanina, the son of Idi, said, Why is it that the words of Torah are compared to water? Like it said in the Pasuk that we just read about last week in terms of how you uh, educate your students. Woe, all those who are thirsty, go to water, go to drink. Why is it compared to water in that Pasuk and in other places? To teach you, just as water, they leave the high places. It goes to the low places. So the water at the top of the mountain, where does it flow? It flows ever downward. So if ever there's a water gathered in a place and there's an option to go down, water will always take the option to go down. Okay? After the Torah, so too the words of Torah and Mitzkaimin are unable to be sustained only in a person whose opinion of himself his knowledge is, or his, uh, his consciousness, shifela, is low. If a person is arrogant, or they are ego-driven, the Torah cannot reside within him. How come the Torah is compared to these three drinks? Torah is compared to water, to or wine, and to milk. Dikhtiv, like the Pasuk says, Hoi kol tzameh lechul amayim. The Pasuk says, that Pasuk we just read about water. Uchtiv, and also it says, Lechu shivru ve'ichlu, go buy food and eat. Ve'lechu shivru ve'lochesef, and go and buy sustenance without any money. Free, go buy free uh, sustenance. U'belo mechir, without a price. Yain ve'chalav, wine and milk. Referring to the Torah that a person can go buy for free. How much does it cost to go on Torah anytime and listen to a class, to listen to a podcast, to come to the Shi'ur? It doesn't cost anything. You can come a thousand mornings in a row and never sponsor a class if you wanted to. Lomar lecha, although I'm not allowed to contractually say that. Lomar lecha, to teach you, mash losha mashkin alalu, just as three, these three drinks, en mitkaimin, ela bepachot shebekelim, they only are sustained in the most, uh, the cheapest of vessels. After Torah and Mitkaimin, they do also the words of Torah do not say stay or get, or get sustained. Only in someone whose consciousness is low, who is, is uh, uh, humble. Kidam Rale Barte de Kesar. Fantastic story. We mentioned it on Shabbat. The daughter of Caesar. So the Roman Emperor's daughter said to Rabbi Yoshua ben Hanania. Rabbi Yoshua ben Hanania was an elderly sage and he was not particularly uh, handsome to say the least. She said to him, How is such glorious wisdom, such wondrous wisdom, in a disgusting vessel? <laughs> Mic drop. He said to her, Your father, the Caesar, Your father puts his finest wines in the ugliest of vessels. Pachra, right? In the, in the earthenware vessels. Right? That's, a, that's where they're stored. Amr Aleh, she said, what do you mean? Ela be'emai. Near me, what should we put it in? Everyone puts their wine in earthenware vessels, in the, in the cellars. Amarla, in the casks. Amarla, he said to her, Atun, the chashvitu, that's true for everybody else, but you, you're so special. You're so elevated. You're the nobility. Ramu bemani de dava ukaspa. Put your wine in vessels of gold and silver. Azlava amra lela avua. She went and told her father. Ramya, the father, put lachamra, the wine, bemani dava ukaspa. He put it in gold and silver vessels. Vitakif, and it soured. The Caesar's entire wine cellar is now off. Atuva amrule. The servants came and they told him, Caesar. You know, your, uh, your wine, sayonara. 
Amalah Lebatei comes to his daughter and he says, Man Amalah Chachi, who told you to do this? You can imagine what he plans to do to the person that destroyed his wine collection. Amrale, Rabbi Yoshua ben Chananya. Rabbi Yoshua ben Chananya told me to do this. Karyuhu, they called him. Amrale, he said, Amai Amrit Lahachi. He understood that he knew that this was going to be the result. He said, you're so wise. Why would you tell her to do this? Amrale, he said to the Caesar, Ki hechi da Amrali, just as she said to me, Amrila. I said to her, she asked me, why is such glorious wisdom in such an ugly vessel? So I said to her, why is your glorious wine in an ugly vessel? Wine is so she said, well, that's what we keep it in. So he says, well, shouldn't you keep it in gold and silver? Like intimating, you know, that, so I just told her, I, I used her own example of me. I said it back to her. She's the one that actually went forward and changed all your wine with it because of her arrogance. Amrila, the daughter, is not going down without a fight. She says, <laughs> this is a, a real witch. Via <laughs> Shapiri, the Gemiri. But there's also good-looking people who are wise. She's not giving up. Yes. There's also good-looking people that are wise. So he answers her back. So obviously you see that it's not specifically ugly people that are smart. He says, Ihavisanu. If they were ugly, they would be wiser. <laughs> Two opinions on what the Gemara means. One opinion is saying if they were ugly, they would be wiser because the ugly vessel um, you know, contains that which is uh, you know, good, that wisdom better. Because like we said, But there's another reason. Sani, sanu can also come from the Lashon of meat, which means hatred. So it doesn't mean whether they were ugly or pretty. It means if they hated their beauty. In other words, if they were enamored of their beauty, if they, that was something all day they're brushing their hair, then they're not going to be so smart. But if there's someone who, it doesn't, it's not relevant to them, it's just that they happen to be beautiful, then actually they might be wise. In fact, if we take a look back in time, we find who was the most beautiful uh, of all of the Avot or the Shabbatim? Yosef. 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 What does it say about Yosef? It says Ben Zekunim. The Targum translates Ben Zekunim. He was a, a son of old age. He translated it as Bar Chakim. Because the word Zaken in Hebrew could also mean a wise person. Ben Zekunim doesn't mean he was the son of Yaakov's old age. Because if Yaakov loved the son of his old age, who should he have loved the most? Benjamin was the youngest. So therefore, he translates it, Ben Zikunim, a wise son, Bar Chakim. So you see, ya Yosef was someone who was very wise. But he was also pretty. Also, what's his name? It was the rabbi. Rabbi, rabbi, uh, rabbi, uh, rabbi Ishmael Kohen Gadol. So at least Rabbi Ishmael Kohen Gadol, one could say, he hated the fact that he was beautiful. Or he wasn't enamored by it. But by Yosef, we specifically read about the fact, Vehu Nar, that he was misalsel b'se'aro. So we have a question on the pasuk that says that Yosef was so wise, and number one, he's beautiful, so according to the first pshat, he shouldn't be wise, and number two, he doesn't hate the fact that he's beautiful, so according to number, uh, opinion number two, he shouldn't be wise. That's why if you look carefully, Gemara doesn't say he's not wise, he says, Yavisanu tefehave gemiri. That means, that if Yosef was not obsessed with his looks, he would have been smarter. And my friends, could Yosef have been a little bit smarter? Yes, yes he could have. <laughs> and ironically, our rabbis tell us it was that obsession with self that caused him to make those mistakes. Right. So what Tosafot explains, if you take a look back on the page before, Tosafot says, Im sonim ayofi, havu biyoter. It doesn't mean that they would or would not. It's not a zero-sum game. Okay? So what we're learning over here is that a person who's obsessed with their beauty, it's very hard for them to be a Talmi Chacham because ultimately, it colors, like we just said downstairs, it gives them a bias with which to view wisdom. Now this is not only true about beauty, it's true about a lot of things. And that's why the Gemara starts off by talking about a, 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 a humble spirit, and then it speaks about a person 
who's vain about the way that they look. But what if you're vain about something else? What if you're vain about uh, how popular you are? What if you're vain about how much power you have? What if you're, uh, you're vain about how wealthy you are? All of those things can be a trap for you. Rabotai, you know what else can be a trap? If you're vain about how smart you are. That's also a problem in Da'ato Shefila. That also could become a person's obsession with self where they're unable to see their own, their own blind spots, where objects in the mirror are closer than they may appear. Davar acher. So we're comparing it to these three things because they can only, these three liquids, milk, wine, and, um, water. and, and water, because they, are only, they, they only are kept in vessels that are simple. If you put water in a silver vessel, what happens? It gets a metallic taste. Okay? So it affects the water. The, the, the milk will sour. The wine will go off. So therefore, that was the first opinion. Davar acher, another opinion. These three liquids, you have to pay attention to them. If you don't pay attention to them, something could happen. So number one, right, they might spill. Because they're very, the liquid is very viscous. It's, excuse me, it's not very viscous. It's liquidy. So if something happens, it spills easily. If you have a jar of honey, honey is also a chashuv liquid. But if it, sp- if it falls over, what happens? It takes three minutes until it comes out. Oil is thick. Another opinion as to why it doesn't matter if you're paying attention. What happens if something falls into oil or honey? It stays at the top, you scoop it out, no problem. If it falls into one of these liquids, which does not as thick, it can go to the bottom and ruin the entire thing. So these three things, a person needs to have their mind on it all the time. Teaching us that when you have wisdom in Torah, you need to review all the time, if you're going to take your mind off of it, it's going to, it's going to disappear. That's why we say, And these words that I've given you should be on your mouth, on your, in your heart all the time. Okay? Amar Rabbi Chama Rachanina. Rabbi Chama, the son of Chanina, used to teach. Gadol Yom Hageshamim ki Yom Shani Shamayim Vayat. The day of the rain is as great as the day that God created the uh, the heavens and the earth. Shine Emar. Har Ifu Shamayim Mal. The rains it rains down from the heaven from above. Usha Hakim Yizlu Tzedek, and from the earth will uh, ooze righteousness. Tiftach Aretz Viyifru Yesha, and they will. Produce yesha salvation, utzdaka and righteousness. Tatsmiach shall grow from the earth. Yahad, all of those things will grow together. So he talks about the heavens pouring down. You know all these wonderful things. He talks about the earth producing all these wonderful things. Ani Hashem Berativ. I am Hashem who created it. Pay attention. Beratim lo neemar. It doesn't say I created them. I e heaven and earth. I e salvation and righteousness. It says I created it. What is it here? It's referring to the rain. So you see that God is taking more pleasure in saying, I created it in the rain than he is taking in the fact that he created heaven and earth. At least they are equal. Amar of Oshia. Rav Oshia taught, Gadol Yom HaGeshamim, great is the day of rain. Shafil Yeshua para viravabo. That even uh, salvation is uh, destined to grow from it. Like we just saw in the, in the Pasuk that we read, Shinemar, Tiftach Aretz, the earth opens, Vifru Yesha, and uh, salvation grows. Uh, unbelievably, we are learning from here a powerful idea, and I never realized this. When it rains, that means that on that day, salvation sprouts. Yeah. If a person has any needs, mm. then they should pray on a day of rain. Yeah. We're spending the whole day of rain Quetching about the rain. Wow. Meanwhile, if this is a day of salvation, what should we be doing? You see it's bucketing, especially if you see that it's going down like crazy. What should you do? Turn to Shamayim, ask for something that you need. They say if it's raining on your wedding day, bad luck. It's like rain. Okay. Right? Uh, uh, exactly. <laughs> But, but she was full of herself, so she had no wisdom. Rabbi Tanchum said, the son of Hanilai, the rain does not fall unless the sins of the Jews are forgiven. 
So rain is not only a sign of salvation, it's a sign of godly forgiveness. Hashem, you desired your earth. Shaved uh, Shavit Yaakov. You have returned the uh, the uh, exiles of Yaakov. Nasata Avon Amecha, you are carrying the sins of your people. Chisita Chochatatam Sela. You covered over all of their sins. So you see that in the covering over of their sins, in the carrying of their Avon, that's how Hashem, Ratzit Hashem Atzecha, how Hashem takes care of the earth by giving it the rain. Amale Ziri Midihavat. Ziri, who came from the city of Dihavat. The Arch is saying that because you favored your land, that's the rain. That's what I'm saying. So, okay. so Ratzita, when a God says Ratzita, but it does not say in the Pasuk anything about rain. But the desiring of the land, when Hashem says Ratzita, I wanted the land, I wanted it to keep it up, that is expressed in how does God take care of the earth? By raining on it. Okay? So it does not make any mention. Usually we'd have a follow-up learned to hear. Like it would say, Hashem desires the earth. And how do you know that desire means rain? Shenemar, but it doesn't bring that over here. It's assuming that you'll figure out that that's what it means. How does God take care of the earth? He takes care of the earth by, uh, by doing that. Okay, uh, let's carry on. <clears throat> Where are we? Ze'iri midihavat. The reason why it's mentioning this is because there's another Ze'iri that we don't want you to get mixed up with. Amali Ze'iri midihavat le Ravina. Ze'iri from Dihav, from the city of Dihavat said to Ravina. Atun mihacha matnitu. You learn it from that, from that verse. Uh, we learn it from another place. You will listen to the heavens and you will forgive to the sin. So you see that when uh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu listens to the heavens, okay, he also forgives the sins of the people. It's connecting the heavens listening to the people, i.e., how do the heavens listen? By producing that which they give. It's connecting that to the forgiveness of the people. So again, sorry? A long There's a few pesukim here that actually in the Gemara, the Gemara gives a vigomer, and it skips. And in one of the cases, it actually skips even the words. It's, it skips even the words that you would learn it from. Okay, we're going to see another one. Chisita. You're going to see another one where the Gemara says, "Meanta, uh, um, meanta, uh, meanta." I forget the last we word. We had it before. We had it in the beginning. No, there's another one here. One second. Well, this one, this pasuk, on the side, it says, Right, and the reason why it skips it is because it assumes that hearing the heavens is enough for you to understand it. That's why it uses, it uses Vigomer. But there's one later on, Me'antahi Kalem. So that one is actually imperative for the, for the Dirasha, right? We, this is enough, like Hazinu Hashemayim Va'adabera, right? Or as an example, where the pasuk says that God calls, right? Hazinu Hashemayim Va'adabera Tma Aretzim Yerfi. Yeah, Arof Karatar Lekhi. So you see that God says, "Listen, O heavens, heavens and earth are the witness." And what does it mean that the heavens are listening? It decides whether or not it's going to give it. So we have enough in this abridged, truncated pasuk to be able to understand it. Here, though, me'anta hikalem, we're going to see in a minute, we do not have enough. And uh, the Torah, is, the Gemara is referring on your, uh, on your erudition to be able to assume you know what it's talking about. Okay. Uh, so, another thing. So, what are we learning from this? We're learning from this that the day of rain is also a day of forgiveness. Yes. If a person has done an avon and they want and they feel like they need forgiveness from God or they want to ask forgiveness from someone, when should you ask? On the day of rain. I would think that you wait for a nice sunny day, guys in a good mood. <laughs> so I was saying something else. But I don't have a Gemara, I don't have a proof from the Gemara that it's forgiveness in a human. I have a, at least a proof from the Gemara that it's forgiveness from God. Okay. Amar of Tanchum Bered Rav Chia. Rav Tanchum, the son of Rav Chia, taught Ish Kfar Akko, from the city of Akko. Ena Gishmim Ne'etzarim, the rains are not withheld. Ela Im Kenet Chayvu, So Nehem Shay Yisrael, the rains are not withheld unless the enemies of Israel are. Uh, were destined for destruction. So when you see the rain withheld, it means that there was a gezerah that the Jewish people should be wiped out. Now, every time it says, son ehen shal Yisrael, the enemies of the Jews, what does that uh, mean? It's a metaphor. It's a euphemism for the Jews. It's just that we don't like saying that the Jews should be destroyed. 
So we use a term that says the enemies of the Jews should be destroyed. Like we had just now in this week's parasha, where Paro says that the Jewish people, if we go, if we go to war, uh, they'll join our enemies, the Alam in Aretz, and they will leave the land. What do they mean? They mean they'll make us leave the land. But you don't want to say something bad about yourself. You don't want the Aynara. Doesn't it mean that uh, the, our enemy come up within our land? No. No, because again, opposite. The Oyvenu is coming to take over the land. They're not leaving. No, not that they're leaving. They, they raised from in our land. Our enemy raised from our land. That is a beautiful shot. And yes, there are those that explain the Pasuk that way. But, yeah. but the Gemara says, and Rashi quotes it, that they didn't want to say it about themselves. Right. So they yeah. said it about the Jews. Yeah. Like, and they will leave. But they really meant that they'll force us to leave. So we, a lot of times we don't say that. Like even in today, in our language, we say, we say, if someone gets sick, if Barmenan, someone gets sick, who are we talking about? He asked the insurance agent. <laughs> He's talking to you, you know, the guy's like, what do you mean someone? <laughs> yeah, I'm asking for a friend. If a friend gets cancer, that's what you mean? What do you mean? You say, Bar Menan. You're saying, what if I'm chas v'shalom, something happens to me, so, but you don't want to say things like that about yourself. So you say it about some undisclosed third party. Wait, if you ask my wife's grandfather, the biggest enemy of the Jew is the Jew. Is the Jew. Okay. <laughs> wow, I like that one. Okay. I like that one and I hate that one. <laughs> So the grains are not withheld. Unless the enemies of the Jewish people are, are deserving of destruction. So when rain is not coming and we're facing a drought, it, it references the fact that the Jewish people are uh, in bad news. We have a lot of tissue to do. So we're not really praying in a certain sense when there's not rain. We're not just praying that there should be rain. We're praying to be saved because it, right. it's a sign that actually something very terrible is supposed to happen to us. Shine Emar, like it says, Tzia Gam Chom, so warm weather and, uh, and, and, and dry weather. Yigzelu Meme, Mime Shedek, they steal away the waters of the time of the season of the snow, of the cold season. So when the, the warm seasons steal the rain from the rainy seasons, Sheol Hateu, you see that they've made the sin of the depths of Gehennam, which means that the Jewish people really deserve something terrible, and it's being expressed in the fact that the rain is being withheld from where it's supposed to go. Am le'ziri midi havat. Ziri midi havat said, le'ravina, atun me'acha matnitula. You learned it from that pasuk. Anan me'acha matnitana, matninana. We learned it from this pasuk. Ve'atzar tashamayim, and again, he's relying on you going to the end. Lo matar, right? And the end of the pasuk says, ve'avadetem me'ra, now the Aretz. So you see that the Jewish people were called upon for destruction from the earth because it says, and Hashem will withhold the rains and you will be lost, Mehera, from on the earth. So you see that there's a connection between the Atzirat Geshamim, the withholding of the rains, and the fact that Jewish people are supposed to be destroyed. Amar Rav Hezda, Rav Hezda says, when the rain gets held back, it can be because of the fact that they did not give enough tirumah and they did not give enough ma'aser. They didn't give the 10%. They didn't give the tirumah. The, the warm and the, and the hot season stole away the rains of the winter. What does it mean to say? Rabbi Ishmael learned on this pasuk, it's learning the word tziya, on the word tziva, okay? The thing that tziva, the things that I commanded you to do in the summer, i.e., when the fruits are growing, what commandments did I give you on the fruits that were growing, i.e., to separate, to to give from the fruits to the poor? So from the things that you didn't listen to my command of the summer, <clears throat> what does that do? You did not do them. You're going to be, we're going to steal away from you, or it'll be stolen away from you the waters of the winter season during the days of rain. Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Pazi. Rabbi Shimon ben Pazi taught, One of the reasons why we lose uh, the, the rains is because of those that speak Lashon Hara. So by the way, I want you to understand what happens when the people come to the rabbis and they say, Rabbis, it's not raining. What's going on? What's the rabbi supposed to answer? He has 74 different reasons here why it's not raining. The answer is, that's the job of the Gidolei Hador to look at the generation and see what is the problem that's rampant in this generation. 
Where do we find this example? We find it by Moshe Rabbeinu. Okay? He says, Rasha lamat takerecha. We'll see in, uh, in just a minute this concept as well. So Moshe understood that the reason why they were still in, in, in exile was because of Lashon Ara. So we'll see this concept in just a second. But that means that Moshe was saying, and the Pasuk says over there, Achen uh, noda hadavar. Behold, um, the thing is known. What did the guy tell him? Re Moshe Rabbeinu comes to the guy. He says, Rasha, why are you hitting your friend? So the guy says to him, Hagen yata omer, what, you want to kill me? Just like you killed the other guy? Moshe's like, Uli. The words got out that I killed the other guy to save the other Jew. That means that people are snitching on one another. If that's the case, he says, Behold, the thing is known. Literally, he means, the thing that he did yesterday is known. Rashi says, Moshe says, I was wondering, why are the Jews still stuck here in exile? What is the reason why HaKadosh Baruch Hu won't take them out to after all their suffering? He says, but now I see that they're speaking in Lashon Ara, no da I understand the thing, I understand why they're still here. Isn't that wild? So you see the same concept. It's up to the generations, Tzadikim, the Gidulei Hador, to look at this Gemara and say, here are the list of reasons, the short list, about why it's not raining. Let's talk it over. What's going on in your community? Are the people studying a lot? Maybe it's not Bitu Torah. Are the people speaking a lot of Lashon Ara? Maybe it's that. They're not speaking Lashon Ara. Everyone's on the Chafetz Chaim trip. Okay, so what is it? Maybe it's, uh, what's it called? It's, uh, uh, it's one of the other reasons. Like we said earlier, they're not giving to Rumot to Ma'asrot. Okay, let's continue. Amar Rabbi Shuaim Pazi. Ein Geshem Yenatzarim B'Shuim Mesapre Lashon Ara. It comes from the speakers of Lashon Ara. Shneemar, Ruach Tzafon, Tichodel Geshem, a easterly, a northerly wind will bring the rain, ufanim niz'amim l'shon tzater, and a uh, angry face, l'shon tzater, comes from a hidden speech. So you see, hidden speech, what's that talking about? When people speak about each other behind the, the other's back, that causes this angry face, it causes this ruach tzafon techolel geshem, Amar, it withholds the rain. Amar Rav Salah, Amar Rav Hamnuna, Rav Salah, the son of, uh, said in the name of Rav Hamnuna, Yana geshem netzarim, it comes from people who are chutzpah. They exhibit a lot of chutzpah. They're arrogant. Like the Pasuk says, and will, will be withheld the rains, the, the, the showers and the rains. And the forehead, the brazen forehead, the chutzpah of a harlot woman, did you have? Now, interesting, the pasuk, the last two words of the pasuk that the Gemara does not tell you, says Vigomer, is me'anta hikalim, you refused to be embarrassed. So you see over here, the pasuk is connecting the brazenness with the withholding of the showers and the rains. So you see that therefore the rains are withheld because of arrogance and chutzpah. Ve'amarav salah, amarav amnuna. Rav salah said in the name of amnuna. Kol adam sheish la azut panim. All people, people that have chutzpah, sof nechshal ba'avera. In the end, they wind up committing sins because of it. Sheneemar, like it says, umetzach isha zona hayalach. The brazenness of a harlot woman did you have. Me'an ta'ikalem. You refused to be embarrassed. So we see from the fact that the Pasuk says that you refuse to be embarrassed, that it's calling that the Metzach Isha Zonah, it's connecting it with, the, with the, the, uh, the worst of sins, with the sin of prostitution. Rav Nachman Amar, Rav Nachman used to say, Biyadua, you should just know, it doesn't say that you're gonna sin, it says that you've, you've sinned already. So if you see someone who's arrogant, don't think to yourself, oh, this guy's gonna come to sin. You should know already that the guy has sinned because of it. Shinehemar, it doesn't say, lecha, you will have the brazen forehead of a, uh, of, a, of a woman that's going like this, you know, stretching her head out, you know, feel like, you know pushing herself into your face, me, 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 right? It, you know that they've already sinned. Why? Because it says, hayalach, in the past tense. Um, does not say what you will have. Amar Rabba Baravuna. Rabba Baravuna taught. Kodam shishu azut panim. Person that has arrogance. Muta lekrotor asha. You're allowed to call him wicked. Even though you're not allowed to call a person wicked generally. Shine Amar, like the Pasuk says, He is ish rasha bifanav. A person who has azut, you could say to him, is rasha in his face. 
Rav Nachman by Yitzchak Amar, Rav Nachman by Yitzchak stretches it and says, Mutal san oto. Wow. You're allowed to hate him. Are you allowed to hate another Jew? No. No, says the Gemara. But a person who has azut, who's chutzpah, who's brazen, has an arrogance, you're allowed to hate him. Shine Amar, ve'oz panav yishune, the, um, the, uh, uh, the brazenness of his face shall change. Atikre yishune, don't read it, it shall change. Ela yisane, shall be hated. Fascinating. Now you see, the Mishnah in Avot actually says, as panim legehinam. The Torah treats arrogance like a cancer. It says that arrogance, a person who's arrogant and God, can't be in the same room together. You ever hate so much, someone so much? You know, you don't like someone. You could be polite. Maybe you're not going to be friendly. Maybe you hate them more. It's hard to be polite. But you could avoid them. There's a person that you hate so much, you can't even be in the same room. What does it say about a person who has a chutzpah, who has arrogance? The person says a person, the Gemara says about a person who's gava, en ani vahu, God says, he and I cannot live bechvifa achat in one space. Wild, okay? Amar Rav Katina, Rav Katina taught, En ha gishamim ne'etzarin, el b'shvil b'tul Torah. Gishamim are not withheld, only because of, b'tul Torah, because of the, uh, the uh, abandonment of learning Torah. Shnei Amar, like the Pasuk says, Ba'asaltaim yimacha mikre, mikare. Ba'asaltaim, literally, the Pasuk does not mean what we're talking about. But like we've already seen before a few times, uh, the Gemara is translating it another way. Ba'asaltaim, meaning with laziness, the ceiling, the roof will collapse. Why? You were lazy. You didn't put the roof up properly. You didn't support it properly. You didn't put glue. You didn't do the right things. We have an architect over here. What if you're lazy? The ceiling falls in. That's what happens. The Gemara is Doresh the Pasuk in another way. Bishvil Aslut Shayab Israel. Be'asaltaim, because of the, br- the laziness that was in the Israel, Shiloh Askuba Torah, that they did not learn Torah, Na'aseh, Sone'o Shel Yisrael, Shel HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Again, we're not talking about God, so what do we call God when we don't want to talk about Him? They hate the one that God hates, but who are we talking about? Hashem, in the laziness of the Jewish people, Na'aseh Bar Menan, HaKadosh Baruch Hu becomes Mach, He becomes poor. Yimach hmm. HaMekareh. Ve'en mach el ani. Mach means ani. How do I know that mach means a poor person? Shine ema, like the Pasuk says, ve'machum erkecha. If the person is too poor for your evaluation. If a person says, I'm giving my evaluation, my erki, to the, to the Beit HaMikdash. So you evaluate him. What happens if the person is too poor for your evaluation? So the, the Pasuk says what you should do. But you see the word means, mach means poor. We also have it, ki yamuch achicha. Right? You see, again, the word mach means poor. So ba'asaltaim, when you are, when you are lazy, yimach ha-mikareh, will become poor ha-mikareh. What does mikareh mean? In mikareh el ha-kadosh baruch hu, shine'emar ha-mikareh ba-mayim aliyotav. That God, He roofs His heavens with water. Because what is the word for heaven in Hebrew? No, heaven, for the heavens. Shamaim. Shamaim is an amalgam of two words. Sham, Maim. So God, He, he uh, tiles His roof, so to speak. The heavens are filled with waters. So therefore, Ba'asaltaim yimacha mikareh means that with our laziness, we make God the roofer. We make Him poor. And so to speak, Barmanan, He is unable to give us, obviously based on his own rules. He's unable, he can't give us the rain because he tied it to us doing uh, the misvot and to learning Torah. Shinei Amar, ha-mekareh ma'im aliyotav. Rabbi Yosef, o ma'amar mehacha. Rabbi Yosef teaches from here, ve'ata lo ra'u or bahir hu b'shahakim v'ruach avra v'tetarem. And now, lo ra'u or, they did not see or. Interestingly enough, or over here means rain. We have an example of or meaning rain and the Gemara will bring it. They did not see rain. Bahiru, even though Bahiru Bashahakim, it is patchy with clouds in the heavens. So you have clouds in the heavens. It looks like it's about to rain. Hallelujah, everyone's getting out their umbrellas. 
and a wind comes and blows away and cleans away those clouds that could have given rain. us the rain. Ve'en or el Torah, the pasuk, we're learning this, now en or, lo ra'u or, they did not see, or, from the fact that we did not see the Torah, we were not learning Torah, shine'emar kiner mitzvah Torah or, you see the Torah is called or, right? Since Torah is called or, bahiru b'shahakim, even though it's cloudy in the heavens, tana debere b'shmael, how do we learn bahir? Usually bahir means clear or bright. Even when it's filled with clouds, to rain down uh, all the wonderful rain and dew that we need, a wind blows and takes them away um, from the heavens because of the fact that we did not study Torah. Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Ami says, the rains are not withheld from this with the sin of stealing. Shinemar, all al kapayim kisa or be be avon kapayim kisa or with the sin of of the hands kisa kisa or was taken the rain be avon kapayim kisa or ve'en kapayim el hamas kapayim means a hamas something that was stolen shine emar like the pasuk says uh, in the navi that they did teshuba umin ha hamas asher bechapehem from the the um, the sins of their of their uh, of their hands, the en or ela matar, and there's only an or when it says or it can mean rain. Shneemar yafitz anan oro. God spreads out the clouds of his rains. So we see the word or also has a connotation not just of light but also of rain. So if we go back and read the pasuk now, the pasuk says al kapaim because of the sin of kapaim of your of your palms. Kisa or uh, the rain was uh, was covered was covered over. <clears throat> now, what's interesting to me, by the way, is that sometimes we find that the Gemara it chooses one thing instead of the other, because technically now go back to the pasuk that we saw before. Remember, veata lora u or they did not see light, and we translated over there light means Torah, and we learned from there that ambisin bitul Torah they we don't see rains. But we could have already in that pasuk brought this idea that or means rain. Or they did not see, or they did not see rain. And then learned from this pasuk something else that Torah does not come for another reason. But there was always a misorah. So it's not just that they're randomly finding pasukim and throwing things together, but rather there was a misorah to learn the pasuk this way. And that's why they chose this way and not another way. Like, I'll give you another example. It says, Al Kapayim Kisaor. For the sake of the hand, the, the or, the rain was covered over. What else do we find associated with Kapayim? Avodah. Prayer. Oh, pray. yeah. Right? The Navi talks about we raise our palms in prayer to God. Where else do we find the word Kapayim? Kapayim. 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 So that's the same thing. That's the raising of hands prayer. Where else do we find Kapayim? Kappa, parsa, le'ani. So we could have learned that for the sin of not giving tzedakah, like the Gemara said earlier, terumot ma'asrot, same idea. So again, you could have seen al kapaim kisaor. But again, there was a specific misora to learn which pesukim came from what. Let's finish with this. Okay? So the Gemara asks, ma'ita kante? So what's the answer to this? So now we're going to go back to the end of the pasuk. Look on the side in the Gemara. In the Gemara you'll find that there's an end to this pasuk. Al kapaim yiskisa or on on kapaim, which the Gemara translated for stealing kisa or Hashem covered over the rain. Vayitzav alea b'mafgia, and he commanded her. He commanded it. What is it talking about? The rain b'mafgia. So we'll see b'mafgia means for the one that met. But let's see how the Gemara translates it. Ma'ita kante, if it's not raining, or if people were stealing, yirbeba tefila, the person should exceedingly pray. Shnei amar, like the pasuk says, vayitzav alei b'mafgia, and he commanded her b'mafgia. What does b'mafgia mean? Ve'en pigia ela tefila. Whenever we see the word pigia, it means prayer. Prayer. Shnei amar, like the pasuk says, ve'ata altet palil ba'ad amaze. He told the navi, don't pray for these people. Ve'altif gabi. And don't come and bother me. Don't come to me. 
So this meeting with me of pigiah means prayer. It's interesting, the Gemara did not choose. The Gemara in Berachot also has the word pigiah in association with tefillah, where? By Yaakov Avinu, the sun set, Vayifgat Bamakom, says the Gemara over there, Ve'en pigiah, ela tefillah. Why don't we bring that pasuk? Because that pasuk means, and he met the place. We had to prove that that meeting also meant tefillah. How did you prove that it means tefillah? In this pasuk, it says specifically, Al-Titpalel, don't pray for them, al Gabi, and don't meet with me. Illustrating that Pigiyah means tefillah. So that was another example where Pigiyah meant tefillah, but what was the origin source? This is the origin source. So we brought this pasuk, which is a pasuk in the Navi, and not a pasuk in the Torah, because the pasuk in the Torah is learned from the Navi, but the original origin source is in the Navi. <clears throat> okay? Uh, let, let, like I said, let's just finish this piece. What does it mean in the Pasuk? If the Barzel, if the iron is dulled, and who and he, not the face, did ruin. What does that mean? If you saw a heavens, it has become dull like iron. It is that, it is that dull gray. Tal from and it's not giving rain. So it looks like a sky of rain and it's not producing rain. Why is it? Because of the actions of the generation. Shahin Mukul Kalim, that they are kil that they are Mukul Kalim. What are they Mukul Kal? Shinaymar Vuhu Lo Panim Kilkel. And they did not deface become ruined. What does it mean? Uh, that they did not deface, meaning that they did not come to his face. What should they do? Yitgabru berachamim. They should. Uh, they should. If they did not pray, if they did not come to God's face, right? Lechalot um, panecha to come and pray to them. If they did not pray or if that did not work, what should they do? Read the end of that pasuk at the bottom. The end of the pasuk says, "Ulo panim kilkel v'chayalim yigbar." Right? They will. Um, they will become mighty like soldiers. Vitron hachsher chokma. So what does it mean? V'chayalim yigbar. They should, like soldiers, do more and more. So if you prayed, you were messed up and it didn't rain, and because of you messed up, it stopped raining. What should you do? You should start to pray. If that still didn't work, what should you do? Chayalim yigbar. There's nobody who prays like a soldier in the field. You know what they say? There's no atheist in a foxhole. Vitron hachsher chokma. Kol shiken imukshiru maasehem mikara. What does the Gemara end off end off by saying the pasuk? Vietron hakashir chokma. You know, it would be wiser. It would be much wiser if we didn't have to be in this desperate situation. If we didn't screw up. If we didn't have to pray. If we would have prayed from the beginning. If we would have done done teshuva in the beginning, then that would have been better. Resh Lakish Amar. Resh Lakish interprets this. Im ra'ita talmid. If you have seen a student, if you see a student who finds it so difficult to learn, it's like iron. What should he do? It's because he did not spend the time to arrange his mishnayot properly. And he did not from the beginning, from lift, like the word lifnim, he did not fix. What should he do? He should spend a lot more time, go over and over and over the, the original source, the Mishnah. He'll be able to, like the soldiers, he'll be able to do much better, much more. How much more so if his Mishnah was uh, arranged for him properly from the beginning? What does it mean? Imagine you don't know the Mishnah properly. You're trying not to understand the Gemara. You don't know anything. You can't remember what the Mishnah said. Or if you remember the Mishnah wrong, you're never going to be able to come with the answer because it's always going to be contradictory. Because you remembered the Mishnah, the wrong guy, the wrong thing. So if you have the Mishnah right, then the Gemara goes easy. You have the Mishnah not correct, it's much harder. Says the Gemara, and to prove the point, Resh Lakish, the guy who said this, Na'e Doresh Na'e Mekayem, it's good when one uh, says something, but also they keep it he would learn the Mishnayot that he studied 40 times. Against the 40 days that it took Moshe to get the Torah. And only after 40 times reviewing the Mishnah would he go to his rabbi, Rabbi Yochanan, uh, to study the Gemara. 
Rav Ada Bar Ahava, Misadeh Matnitan Esrim Bar Bazinim. He would prepare his Mishnayot um, 24 times. Keneget Torah, Nevi'im Vikituvim. Because there are 24 books. So he understood that there are 24 different elements of study. He would study the Mishnah 24 times. And then he would come before Rava. We'll continue from here on Wednesday night.